Hurricane Dorian has continued to intensify overnight and is now a high-end Category 2 hurricane with winds of 110 miles per hour and a pressure estimate of 972 millibars. This is as of 9 a.m. Eastern Time this August the 30th and more intensification is on the way. The CDPS looks at Port St. Lucie for a possible landfall on September the 3rd with very strong winds of 130 miles per hour, um, a increasing storm size, but the rainfall is going to be the biggest threat, I should still think, with over, with over 20 inches of rain quite possible for the area. Now, the landfall location could shift, so I wouldn't exactly look at Port St. Lucie on its own, but the whole region could receive those kind of conditions. Here it is right now, um, in its location there, just north of uh, the... Uh, Greater Antilles, it's 474 miles from Nassau, 572 from Freeport, 660 from Miami, 661 from Palm Beach, and 771 from Orlando. So those miles are continuing to tick down. A hurricane watch was issued early this morning for the northwestern Bahamas, um, and that will likely be issued, will, will be upgraded to a warning in about a day or two and hurricane watches might come into effect for parts of Florida later on today. This is the total rainfall expectations over the next five days. You can see that uh, large trail of pink there appearing on the screen. That's obviously the storm's track. Any pink areas denote three inches of rain or higher, so large parts of Florida will be within that bracket. Um, and the northernmost Bahamas as well. As I said, 22 inches of rain is quite possible for wherever the landfall zone will end up being. It could be anywhere from Miami all the way north towards the, maybe towards Jacksonville, but probably further south. Sea surface temperatures uh, warm, 28 degrees, possibly 29 as it approaches the islands. And here is another look, a depiction from the GFS model showing what's expected. Um, and they expect a significant hurricane to strike the northernmost Bahamas. There it is moving through, potential landfalls there. And by the time we get to Monday, Tuesday, probably Monday night, uh, the landfall in Florida. Now, the timing of that landfall is being pushed back quite a bit. Initially, we were talking about happening over the weekend, but now we're looking at early next week. Whether that continues to be pushed back um, as the models get a better grip of the storm, we'll see. These are the chances though, Tropical Storm Force winds, 98% at Treasure Key, 94% at West Palm Beach, 92% at Boca Raton, 88% at Port St. Lucie, and 84% in Miami. So this is getting quite real at this point as the storm continues to intensify. These are what the models are saying, uh, the HMON borderline category 5, but most of the model consensus takes it to category 4 range now, low to mid range category 4. Wind shear is going to be low, a low ebb there uh, towards the later part of today and then it's going to go back into the moderate levels. Um, sea surface temperature is very warm, relative humidity is still increasing, so the conditions are getting ever more favourable for Dorian and it's already doing what it's doing so far, getting to high-end Category 2 status, there's certainly plenty of room for it to intensify further. Another category, or as the forecast is saying, maybe two. Here is the latest imagery. We're still yet to see the eye pop out properly, um, but it, I can assure you it is in there. Recon planes are finding very strong winds, um, which is why the National Hurricane Center are running with 110 miles per hour on their recent updates. Their next update will occur at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time um, and still the northwestern side maybe looking slightly bare though in those latest images. It still was dealing with some dry air overnight but it is progressively getting rid of all that. Wind shear is, as I said, going to be lower later today so we could see maybe an uptick in the intensification phase later on today. I would keep watching very closely and make those preparations as only two or three days before the storm starts to strike the areas. You can follow Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com. You can also find our YouTube channel if you're not there already. You may well be. Good chance of that. Subscribe if you haven't. You can also find our Facebook page, search Force 13 all in text, and our Twitter handle, it's at Force 13 on there. You can also help the project become even better by becoming a patron. You can see more information about all the benefits involved by visiting patreon.com forward slash force 13. With a special thanks to these people for being our most valued patrons this month. 
You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.